Well, Mother Nature definitely turned things up a notch this weekend with a major heat wave hitting all parts of our county. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Steve Price and I'm Alicia Summers. It's been one of the hottest days yet this summer and the heat is not over. We have team coverage tonight. Meteorologist Sean Stiles will join us with a look at tomorrow's forecast and it's looking just as hot. News aides Teresa Sardina is going to show you some of the options available for staying cool and some that are closed due to the pandemic. But we begin tonight live at La Jolla Shores where News 8's Netta Iranpour has a look at the large crowds. Netta? Oh, large crowds is right. Hey guys, it is a hot one, that's for sure. It also feels humid out here. So of course, you don't you can't blame these people for wanting to come out to the beach and taking a look here. Look at all these people. This is at La Jolla Shores. We're right at the, where the kayak launch is. So we've seen a lot of that going on here. And you can see all of these umbrellas out of the beach. So many people, uh, you know, just wanting to cool off. It's certainly hot out here. Inland areas, it's hot. We've actually talked to a lot of people from out of town who are visiting here in San Diego as well. I just hope people are staying safe and while it's awesome to get outdoors and do stuff like this, keep, like keep doing that, but be safe about it. Wear a mask because there are a lot of people who are in communities and demographics that don't have the same resources and privileges that I might, um, so I'm going to wear my mask to protect them. Wow, <laughs> there are a lot of people out here, but it's actually really nice if like We've been wearing a mask around. If other people are wearing a mask around, it's I feel like it's safe and it's nice and open. Yeah, so they were responding to the crowds when they showed up here. They're from Northern California. And of course, when it's this hot in San Diego and this humid, a jump in the ocean, a great way to cool off, cope with the warm weather all across the West Coast, the desert Southwest, many communities dealing with excessive heat. There are warnings and advisories in place across our area. Of course, Sean Stiles will get into all of that. But really, it's no wonder this is where many people are coming to get that relief. They're kayaking, they're surfing, swimming hanging out underneath their umbrellas. One of the young ladies we spoke with said even out in the water, it was pretty crowded. And of course, people are not wearing their masks out in the water. So that made her a little bit uneasy. Now, of course, it's not typical to have people in bikinis uh, cover up their faces, but that's just part of being at the beach during a pandemic. That's what county leaders have urged people to do. If you are going to be in big crowds like this, close within six feet of people outside of your households, they do want you to wear your face coverings. Uh, that's not always the easiest thing when you're hot in and out of the water, but they certainly do want you to have your mask handy because, as you can tell, there are plenty of people out here. We are waiting to hear from lifeguards to find out just how busy they have been. But really, from our vantage point here at La Jolla Shores, it does look like a busy holiday weekend. And of course, it's not the holiday, it's just a really hot and humid kind of day. We are live here at Shores. We'll send it back to you now. Yeah, that is a place to go and beat the heat. We're going to see some interesting tan lines oh, next yeah, week, that's I right. think, for sure. There's that. Yeah, sorry. So if you didn't <laughs> head down to the beach to cool off, maybe, well, actually, your options were pretty limited because of the pandemic we have going on. Yeah, but as News 8's Teresa Sardina explains, the county has set up a number of cool zones to help make sure everyone has a safe place to go. You're right, options are limited. We are here at the Spring Valley Community Center where it is serving as a cool zone. Many want to leave the house so they don't have to rack up their electricity bill by running the air conditioning. Those who live in the inland areas are definitely feeling the heat, but we are tracking down cool zones throughout the county. It was really hot earlier this morning. You go to places like community pools, recreation centers, movie theaters, and libraries to ditch the heat. These places are closed to the public due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We called this morning and a lot of them were closed down. The National Weather Service tracks a heat warning for San Diego County deserts, mountains, and valleys from Saturday morning to Monday evening, some areas reaching triple digits. With temperatures soaring high, the county opens cool zones while keeping safety measures in place. People can expect to come in, get their temperature taken, get some information about our cool zone. They can come in, bring a laptop, some books, keep themselves entertained, and just enjoy a nice, cool environment to be in during this hot, hot temperatures. Selected libraries and community centers in Lakeside, Spring Valley, Borrego Springs, Potrero, Fallbrook, San Isabel, and Valley Center open its doors. Utilize the air conditioning. Um, the extreme temperatures can really be taxing on some of our older adult population. So folks come out, 
they're happy to be in the cool to be able to interact with others from a safe physical distance. Weekend hours from noon to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, same hours. Another cool zone in Chula Vista, the former Sears building at the Chula Vista Center. Expect temperature checks. Visitors must wear face coverings and practice social distancing. Be accommodating with the time limits and limited capacity. We want everyone to stay hydrated and keep cool. We're going to have some tips and the cool zone locations at our website, CBS8.com. Back to you. All right, Teresa, thank you. And the heat is far from over as tomorrow is expected to pack just a big of a punch. Meteorologist Sean Stiles joins us now with a first look at your microclimate forecast. And Sean, I think I can do your job today. Hot today, hot tomorrow. <laughs> hot okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> no, no, stick around. I got, I, there's more details than that. It's not 72 and sunny and, uh, you know, a nice sea breeze right now. We do get weather in Southern California and it's usually kind of more of an extreme. It doesn't uh, come in and just a little bit. So we've got this heat advisory for the folks in the inland microclimates that extends basically from the I-15 corridor all the way up into the mountains and it's out in the deserts where things get dangerously hot An excessive heat warning. We're talking about temperatures 110 to 120 degrees up in uh, the Palm Springs area. They are getting beat with the heat up there. It is just really hot. And these are your current temperatures right now. We're still in the low 90s pretty much everywhere in the East County. The mountains a little bit of relief, but Mount Laguna at 90 degrees, 112. That's right now. That's not your daytime high in Borrego. So definitely hot. This is a, a live look towards the west from the Palma Valley. Their high pressure dominates the weather this weekend. Temperatures in the inland mountains and deserts well above average in temperatures will be cooling down finally as we get towards the midweek. But tomorrow along the coastline, again, in the 80s and then a little bit cooler on Tuesday. But another hot one in the inland microclimates, mountains and deserts, it's going to be scorching. I'll have a look at the eight-day microclimate forecast that has some relief in it. All right, and all this talk about the weather brings us to our poll tonight. How are you beating the heat? Yeah, did you head over to the beach like we saw with Netta? A lot of people heading there. Or... Maybe you have AC at your house, and so you're able to just stay cool there. Maybe you went to a cool zone like we saw in Teresa's store or something else. If you vote other, I'm curious to know what you did. So you can leave a comment on my Instagram page. It's Steve Price TV. I put up a picture there. You can just leave your comments underneath, and we'll read some of those on the air as we go through the show. But at this point, man, the overwhelming uh, majority of people are saying staying home, turning, turning on, the, on AC. the AC. I mean, that's really the ultimate relief yeah. um, to vote. Just log on to the News 8 app and scroll down to the vote tab, or you could go to CBS8.com slash vote. We'll have an update coming up a little bit later on in the show. Each year, SDG&E holds fire safety events in person, but this year, due to social distancing, the company held its first drive-through wild safety fair in Ramona, where organizers say over 400 cars came by. Yeah, the goal was to get residents ready in case of an emergency. News 8's Heather Hope shows the big takeaway from today's event. Yes, Steve and Alicia, today's wildfire safety fair was packed with cars and cars for miles. Not only did you receive great information, people also received a lot of great things. Everything from much needed toilet tissue to flashlights, sanitizer, emergency radio, solar charger, down to a bag, a bucket, and a blanket. Everything to get you ready in time for a disaster. Here's the wildfire safety checklist. Yeah. Getting people prepared. Volunteers with the American Red Cross gave out key info for the sdg e drive through wildfire safety fair. We've got some emergency preparedness information for you to help keep you safe. This volunteer kept cool with a fan necklace in the shape of headphones for the heat wave hitting this Ramona Community Center parking lot. A little bit of a wait, but you know, it's worth it. Kathy Stedham came for info since her home burned down in 2007. The evacuation, they didn't know what to do. Um, so I think that these are great for, you know, for information. Coming right up to your car as there were rows of black backpacks filled with so many preparedness items. We've got solar chargers for cell phones and other oh, electronic cool. devices, toilet paper, masks, water, all sorts of good stuff in there. An emergency radio is just what Robert Minton needed. We are in the fire area, so that's one reason why I'm here too. Vegetation management handed out free plants. They're drought resistant, 
And if you're limited on space, this is the perfect tree to plant under the power lines. From the Burn Institute to multiple fire agencies down to a tent full of kettle corn. We want to make this a festive event, but we also want people to understand that there's something very serious behind all of that. SDG&E calling attention to the massive fires in recent years. We've been seeing a trend toward more intense fire seasons bigger fires, faster fires. Some teams notified people of the process of emergency power shutoffs. Family emergency plans. And it's not just for folks living in San Diego's back country, but also for those near the coast. Even if you live in a place like Del Mar, Carlsbad, Oceanside, you need to be prepared because those canyons can also be a problem, particularly on hot, dry days like today. It's key to know community resource centers are open during emergency events. They have a place to come and gather resources like water, snacks, uh, cell phone charging capabilities. Ron and Linda of Ramona loved it. This was way more than we expected. I mean, all the information was just great. And it doesn't stop there. Next week, there'll be another SDG&E drive through wildfire safety fair, this time held at the Julian Charter School. I'll send it back to you, Steve and Alicia.